Hello and welcome to the Music Theory Guy Clinic with me, Music Theory Guy. If you've got a question about music theory, this is the place to get it answered. If you want to get in touch, please send me an email to clinic at musictheoryvideos.com. Now that's precisely what YouTuber Hansi Master has done. He's written to me and he's got a question about transposition, specifically transposing by a minor third. Now, just a word of warning, if you are new to music theory, then transposition is quite a tricky topic and this may not be the video for you. However, for Hansi Master and anybody else that's watching, if you're ready, hold on to your hat, let's have a look. Okay, so here's a very typical example or question you might come across in a music theory exam. Transpose the following passage up a minor third so that it will sound at concert pitch when played by instruments in A. Now, one of the reasons that transposition is so tricky, as I mentioned a few moments ago, is because you need to know about other music theory topics before you can tackle it. So what I recommend that you do is if you're not sure about transposition is have a look at my main lessons. First off, intervals. You have to know how to work at intervals before you can look at transposition. The other video that you might want to have a look at is accidentals and semitones. It's always very useful to have a refresh of what's meant by a sharp or a flat or in even more complicated scenarios, double sharps and double flats. So do have a look at those other lessons, my main lessons first if you need to. Now, there's a number of rules that you need to follow when working out transposition. Number one, make a note of the direction and distance. If we look back at our question, transpose the following passage up a minor third. So the direction is up and the distance is a minor third. Now, I always, always recommend that you write these terms down. It may seem pretty obvious because it's written in the question, but you would be amazed how many times over the years I've come across students who have gone the wrong direction and by the wrong distance. It's always very helpful to write these terms down and keep referring back to them as you work out the answer to the question. Secondly, work out how many semitones make up the distance. Now, when I say semitones, some of you may have come across the term half steps instead. The two mean exactly the same thing, but from this point on, I'm going to say semitones rather than half steps, purely because that's what I'm more used to. Now, to work out how many semitones make up that distance of a minor third, that's where you need to have prior knowledge of intervals. If we start on our keyboard, I'll highlight the C, we know that a minor third up from the C is an E flat. We count how many semitones it is from that C to the E flat. So it's one to the C sharp or D flat, two to the D and three to that E flat. What we do now is where we've made a note of the distance being a minor third, we're going to change it very slightly and we're going to change it to three semitones equals a minor third. That's very important and we're going to come back to that in just a moment. The third rule we need to follow is transpose the key signature. We can see that there are two sharps in our question and I've highlighted them red. Now this is where I point out that there's another music theory topic that you need to know about for transposition and that is key signatures. Have a look at my main lesson, my other video on key signatures if you need any help with this. Now with two sharps in the key signature it could be either D major or B minor. For transposition purposes it really does not matter which one you choose and I'll prove why in a moment. Let's have a look at D major to start with. You can see that I've highlighted the D on the keyboard at the bottom of the screen. The reason it's D is because we're looking at D major. And all we do is go up, remember that's our direction, by three semitones, our distance, until we get to the next note. So we count one to the E flat or D sharp, two to E, and three to F. Now what that means is, because we've moved up three semitones from D, it means we've ended on the F, which means that our new key signature would be F major. Now, F major has one flat in its key signature. Let's pop that onto our answer, and you can see I've highlighted the B flat red. Let's just have a quick look at what would have happened if we'd assumed our passage was in B minor. So there's B on our keyboard at the bottom of the screen. We go up one semitone to the C, two to the C sharp or D flat, and then we go three up to the D. 
So because we end on a D, it means we've moved to D minor. And if we know our key signatures, we know that D minor has also got one flat in its key signature. So as I say, it doesn't really matter whether you take the passage that you're given to be major or minor, as long as you know your key signatures and you move by the right distance, in our case three semitones, and in the correct direction, in our case up, you will always end up with the correct transposed key signature. Rule number four, transpose each note by direction and distance. So we have a look at our first note and it's an F sharp. So many students would trip up on that very first note because they failed to remember or just double check what the key signature is. So we know our first note is that F sharp and here it is on the keyboard at the bottom of the screen. We just go up by three semitones. So it's one to the G, two to the A flat or G sharp and three to the A. So our first transpose note is going to be an A. Write that down. Our next note is a C, so here's C on the keyboard at the bottom, and we go up three semitones. So there's one, two, three. So our third note is, well, is it E flat or D sharp? This is where you need to know about intervals. If it were C to D sharp, it would be a second, and that would be incorrect. Remember, we're being asked to transpose up a minor third, whereas C to E flat is a third. So it's E flat we want as our answer. Write that down. Our next note is a G. Here it is on the keyboard and we go up three semitones. One, two, three. Again, we need to work out whether it's the B flat or the A sharp. So it's a second to the A sharp, but it's a third to the B flat. So we know our answer is a B flat. Write that down. Just be aware that there's no need to write down a flat of that B flat, as that's covered by our transpose key signature, which we worked out earlier. Our next note is an A, so here's the A on our keyboard, and we go up three semitones, one, two, three, and we end on a C, so we know that our transpose note here is a C. Add that to your answer. And finally, we have an E flat, and we go up three semitones on our keyboard, one, two, three. Now we end up on G flat or F sharp. We just have to work out which one's the third. It's the G flat. So we add this to our answer. So here's our completed answer, but we have been through an awful lot of steps to get here. As I say, if you need to have a look at my main lessons, if you need any help with anything we've covered in this video, so key signatures, intervals, accidentals, and semitones, they are the key to unlocking this transposition question. Well, I do hope that's answered your question, Hansi Master, and anybody else out there that's been having trouble with transposition by a minor third. If you've enjoyed this video or you've got a question about music theory, please do send me that email to clinic at musictheorievideos.com. In the meantime, many thanks for watching.